Well, hello there. How are we doing today? Hopefully you're having an absolutely wonderful and blessed day. And, you know, last sermon we were over there looking that way. But I just looked at this and I was like, wow, this is also kind of cool looking if we just look this way. So I, I figured, you know, why mess up the formula? Why not just go right over here? And, you know, we're going to be praising God today and we're going to be thinking about a few verses from the Bible as well as some other stuff. And yeah, I hope that you're all uh, in for a great time. And I hope that you're all happy and you know that God loves you. And uh, let's begin with a little prayer. Right. Oh, sweet Divine Mother, please guide us. Guide us so that we may always come closer. Guide us so that we may see your works in every action. Guide us so that we may be content knowing that we are following your plan. Guide us so that we may know that we are loved by you. Guide us so that our hearts can each come to you and be opened up. Oh, Lord, please guide us. Guide us from the unreal to the real. Guide us from darkness unto light. Guide us from death to immortality. Very good. I've been doing a lot of reading lately, and, you know, the thing that it keeps coming back to me is that uh, Scripture is nice, but the most important thing is not the Scripture itself. It is to feel the love of God within your heart and to be striving to increase that love. You know, you don't just read Scripture to be like, ah, yes, the answer is to everything. It's right here, because, look, the, the book says it, therefore, there's the truth. It's like, no, 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 you want to be able to experience the love of God. You want to be able to think and dwell on the love of God. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of practices lately where, like, with meditation and things like that, we're kind of focusing on the love of God, and we're focusing on trying to feel that presence of God and, you know, like, our everyday activities and things like that. It's not just, um, you know, when we're in the church or anything like that. It's also just, like... Or, or, you know, in the church or the temple or whatever. It's when we're walking around in our daily lives. We're trying to always keep a reminder of God, you know, like with us in our heart. You know, when someone like, oh, I accidentally pressed F12 when I moved something. But, you know, when people um, make us angry or anything like that, we it, it's not that we should remember, oh, just, just to be merciful, we should also remember that God loves that person, even when uh, they make us angry, and, you know, that, you know, God loves us. And, you know, even when we do things that we shouldn't do, we should pray for forgiveness, rather than simply feeling like we are condemned. You know, it's kind of like with a good parent. A good parent doesn't just, you know, uh, abandon you the second you do one thing wrong, right? <laughs> That'd be silly, and, you know... We have this mother, this divine mother, Kali, who is, you know, very fierce looking. And sometimes, you know, if we choose Kali as our Ishta, we might say, oh, well, she's kind of frightening at first. But, you know, the funny thing is, the more you worship her, the good and the closer you get, the more you just see her as this mother, this lovingly, this loving mother figure. And... You know, it's kind of true of, you know, Christ, too, because, you know, from the outside, you might say, I don't know, he seems kind of like he's condemning a lot of people and things like that. But once you, you know, get closer and feel the the love of Christ uh, and you can feel that, like, Christ has, you know, left us these little breadcrumbs that we can follow to get closer to him and to get close to God, it, it becomes a lot less scary. And... You know, scripture and religion are both tools. They're tools to help us get closer to the divine. You don't look to a tool and say, this is the answer. You look to a tool and, you know, you figure out what use you have for it so that you can, you know, move with it. And, you, you, you know, that's like one of the most important things about all of this is that... There's a lot of people I meet who will have, say, claim that they have the proper beliefs. They claim that they've read the Bible, they claim that they've read the Quran, they claim that they've read whatever, Bhagavad Gita, blah, 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 blah. And they will claim that they have the correct views and beliefs. But you know what we're really trying to do here, what we're striving to do here is to experience God and to feel that love 
and to feel the peace that comes with that love. You know, it's it's not just following uh, whatever scripture and then just going, oh, well, I'm following the scripture, so I'm I'm doing the right thing, right? It's like, no, 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 it's much more than that. And, you know, and there are these little moments when you're reading scripture that can really uh, benefit you, but it's not just about the moment in scripture. It's about taking that moment and really, you know, living it and bringing it with you wherever you go, you know, and, you know, I always like this quote from Meister Eckhart where uh, he says, if the only prayer you ever said, you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. Uh, and all God wants from man is a peaceful heart. God wants you to try and still yourself and to, you know, become less attached to the world and try to look to God. And, you know, if you are attached to the world, you can use that attachment to get closer to God. That's, that's what you really want. You know, like, at a certain point, if you cut all the nonsense, right, just, just, you know, go straight to the source. That's what you want. That's what you really want. And these scriptures and these religions they can be tools to help us get there but you know we should remember that if we don't experience and we don't find like enrichment in whatever religious practice that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to keep doing it and sometimes it takes a while to figure out where what is the combination of uh practices that you want to do and i was reading through uh the gospel of matthew and uh, I came to the Beatitudes, and I feel like I want to uh, have us focus on these for a little bit before we say um, a final prayer. The Beatitudes. He said, he being Jesus, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and then the end of the Beatitudes here is, Blessed are you when people insult and persecute you falsely, say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they are persecuted they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. We need to give up our hatred. Because you know, in the same thing here, because this is basically the Sermon on the Mount, you know, Jesus talks about like how it's not enough to simply not murder. It is also like, it is the near thought of like hatred in your heart. Uh, here it is the verse. You've heard it said to the people long ago, you shall not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or a sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka is answerable to the court. Anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Now, what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to see that it's not just, you know, also like that love for God. It is that love for God to transfer over to, you know, people around you and like the people you encounter and things like that. You know, and I know it can be difficult. It can be difficult when you feel anger rising up to, to call it down. Or it can be difficult when negative emotions want to attack you from all sides. Or they feel like they can attack you from all sides. But the most important thing is to remember that you don't, A, you don't have to cling on to every thought that enters your head. If you meditate a lot, you'll start to see this where like thoughts will just come. It doesn't matter really what you're doing or not doing. And, and some of those thoughts will be bad and other ones will be great. Whatever. But what you need to do is not be so attached to those thoughts and instead, you know, 
you know, negative thought. You don't like break down and think, oh my God, I had this really bad thought. A much better way to approach it is when you have the bad thought, you're like, okay, it's just, it's just a thought. Just witness it and go. And the thought that you want to like keep trying to bring back into your head and like, you know, whenever you notice that it's not there is, you know, oh, God loves this person and God is present in all things. So this person just still deserves respect or, you know, God is present in all things. What miracles uh, are, are present? Like, you know, if you ever just like look at a fire, even a fire can be a miracle. You know, and I think it's all pretty important for us to remember. I think it's important for us to remember not just because, you know, it's good for us, but it's good for everyone around us. And it's important to know that, like, we talk about purifying the mind when we talk about trying to get closer to God. We don't just mean, like, oh, man, yeah, you just yell, God, 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 cool, God is cool, God is great, all the time. <laughs> you want to make it so that when your peace is disturbed, you can bring it back. Uh, this is another quote from my strike card I like that's related to this. There's a huge silence inside each of us that beckons us into itself. And, and the recovery of our own silence can teach us to bring, can begin to teach us the language of heaven. And this is from Ephesians uh, 3.17. That Christ may make his home in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, and, uh, yeah, so that's what I was really trying to say. It's just like you want to bring those practices and those feelings out and you really want to always try to see if you can remind yourself of the love of God and the fact that God loves everybody, even the people that are difficult. Okay, okay. I just think that that's an important thing for us to do. Anyway, let us end with a little prayer. O oh, sweet Divine Mother, please guide us. Guide us so that we may be instruments of your will. Guide us so that we may be instruments of your peace, and guide us so that we may always see your presence in everyone. Guide us so that in every step people take, we see the, step, the footprints of Christ. Guide us so that our hearts may be open to love, and that we may love those around us. Guide us so that we may be at peace. Guide us so that we may be purified, and may purify the world around us. Guide us so that we may always come back to you, remember you, and perfect our worship of you. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you, God, for this sweet moment. And let us carry this sweetness out throughout the rest of the day and the rest of our lives if we can. Aum Krima Kalgai Noha. Okay. Well, I hope that you all have an absolutely wonderful day. And remember, and remember to bring that love with you wherever you go and try to hold on to that love. And also remember that people are your brothers and sisters and that everybody is just a human and that or everyone is just, you know, a flawed being. So, you know, remember that and always try to understand that and always look at everything with a mother's love and grace. Okay. Have you all have a great one. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye. God loves you. Bye.